In this video, we're going to go over controllers in Nest.js. In the previous video, we talked about creating, you know, maybe a ninjas API that allows you to manage an army of ninjas. So in order to have an API, right, you probably will have some kind of routes uh, defined. So uh, let's write a couple of comments here. Imagine that perhaps you want to have a get slash ninjas, right, which returns you maybe a collection of ninjas. Typically in REST, you might also have a route that allows you to get a single ninja where you provide a, an ID for that ninja on the path of your request. You also want to be able to create ninjas, right? So typically in, in REST, it will probably be the same endpoint as this, except we're using POST, HTTP POST. And then similarly, you might have a PUT or a patch uh, on the slash ID path to update uh, that record. And then finally, you might have a delete also taking in a ID parameter so that, you know, you can delete ninjas, you know, maybe you're trying to remove them from the battlefield. So at a high level, controllers are in charge of defining exactly this, right? It defines what are the paths, what are the, the HTTP methods for each of these paths. So you can see that in this controller, we have this uh, string ninjas that basically says that everything within this controller is going to have that prefix, right? So that's one of the things that we want in our paths is that ultimately each and every one of them has a prefix ninjas. So in order to create these routes, again, you need a class that is annotated with the controller decorator and then optionally some kind of path that you provide in here. And then within your controller, you get to find methods for each one of your routes. So for example, if we were trying to do get ninjas, let's define a method for that. Uh, let's start with just returning an empty array. We'll update this later in the series. And right now this is just a method for a class. Nest doesn't yet know that this is meant to represent a route. The way we do that is to include another decorator, get from nest.js common. And that basically provides Nest an idea that, hey, this method is to create an HTTP get on slash ninjas. Now you might be wondering what about uh, other paths that are beyond just ninjas. So if we were to implement get one ninja, and this is also a get, but notice that in the definition of get, you can provide an optional path to append to the controller's path. So if we did ID like this, that pretty much defines this route. Now let's go ahead and test this real quick to make sure it's working. Our application is already running. If you're following along and your application is not running, make sure to run uh, npm run start dev. But we're back on Thunder client localhost 3000. If we go to slash ninjas HTTP get and hit send, we're going to get back that array. And if we were to pass any ID right now, we're going to get back that object, right? And as an example, the next thing we need to implement is a post on slash ninjas. If we try to request that right now without it being defined, we should expect a 404 not found because it doesn't know where to bring that to. So just to save you a little bit of time, I went ahead and implemented the rest of that boilerplate for you, but it's all the same idea. Notice that we got methods for each of these routes. Uh, there's a dedicated decorator for post, put, and delete and other ones that you might assume like, you know, patch. And then again, remember to provide the parameters inside uh, the decorators here. And that's really routing in a nutshell. Now, of course, there's a couple other parts here that we need to add in. For example, uh, how do we get, how do we parse out this ID from the request so that our logic down here can work with it? So that's where the param decorator comes into play. You usually provide this within uh, the method definition here. And you can see that the param decorator can also expect a string. In our case, we're trying to parse this ID out of the URL. So we're going to say uh, ID here. And then just for TypeScript, we're going to say that this is a string. So what effectively happens here is that, you know, behind the scenes, Nest is parsing out the URL and auto injects it into our method here when it gets invoked. So if we just print out perhaps the ID in a response here, if we go back to our get ninjas slash some kind of ID, hit send, you'll see that the ID is the thing that we passed in, right? So you can probably imagine that we also need the same thing 
in our other routes down here. All right, so that's URL params. Now the URL can also uh, include a query for some of these, right? So for example, uh, for ninjas, maybe you want to be able to filter uh, the type of ninja that you're getting back, right? So your URL might look something like this with a question mark type do fast, you know, maybe you have, I don't know, a fast ninja and a slow ninja, right? So same thing, we need a way to be able to parse that out of the URL. And a lot of it is very similar to what we're doing here, except instead of param, we're going to use query. And same thing, you can provide uh, the string here that you're trying to parse out. Uh, let's say this is a string. And again, just to kind of mock it out, let's provide the type that we inputted into uh, the response. So if we did ninjas type equals fast, we should expect a response of, you know, it's got fast in there. So I hope you see where we're going with this. Later on, we are going to do uh, some kind of filtering on a, on a real collection. Uh, but let's move on and learn other things about the controller. So typically with a post request like this, right, you're going to think of it as you're creating a, a new ninja for your army. We need to be able to also parse the request body. And again, it's all the same pattern as you might imagine. There is a body decorator that allows you to parse out that request body. So maybe let's call this create ninja DTO. Now it would be nice if uh, we had typing for this, right? So that uh, we can kind of figure out what's the shape of this object. So what you typically will want to do, and notice that in our generated users resource earlier, it kind of did it for us. There's a DTO folder here where there's a create user DTO and an update user DTO. We're going to do something similar. Let's go ahead and actually just copy this into our ninjas folder so that it also has its own DTO folder. And then let's rename these to uh, create ninja DTO and update ninja DTO. And let's also update the class name here to create ninja DTO. Same thing for update. All right, and you can see that this update DTO just extends the create ninja DTO. We're going to use this later in our update route. But let's focus on the create ninja DTO first, right? So imagine that maybe as you're creating ninjas for your army, maybe you want to have a name for each of those uh, ninjas. And we can add more fields to this later. Uh, but for now, we can take this and add a typing to our create ninja DTO in here. Make sure to import that. And just to make sure that, you know, this is working correctly, let's go ahead and just create a mock created ninja here where the name is the same one that's passed through uh, the DTO, right? So if we go to our Thunder client, let's go to post ninjas where we need to provide a request body with a name field, give a name here, send, and it's going to give us back an object with the same name. Right, so that just proves that we're able to parse this out. And later we're going to work with that and add validation. You know, if you keep watching the series, we'll come back to this Ninja DTO to kind of improve it and add validation and all of other fun stuff. Now to wrap up our controller here, similarly for an update route, besides the, uh, the ID parameter, we also need its own uh, request body there that provides the updates. So very similarly, we're going to add body here with update Ninja DTO and then we can provide our update ninja DTO type, right? And same thing, we'll return a name. Now our controller right now is really not doing much, but you can see that its its primary responsibility in SJS is to really just define the routes. It's uh, in charge of parsing things out of the request from the URL from the request body, and then ultimately for forwarding that down to services or providers which will do a lot of the underlying logic that we want to actually happen. So think of controllers as very lean uh, routers. They really don't do much other logic besides uh, what we've done here. All right, so that pretty much wraps up our initial controller here. In the next video, we're going to talk about providers and dependency injection so that you know we can start using those services within these controllers so that we can start actually implementing these uh, CRUD endpoints to behave as we expect them to.